Welcome back to Game Changers Silicon Valley, a show about today's emerging innovations that may be the game changers of tomorrow. My name is Jim Conner. I will be your host. This is the second segment of tonight's show addressing a new frontier in Silicon Valley, applying computer technology to agriculture. This emerging sector is referred to as ag tech, and it addresses a broad range of opportunities in food production, resource management, sustainability, and big data. My guests are Roger Royce, founder of Royce Law Firm and the Silicon Valley Ag Tech Conference, and John Erickson, founder of and CEO of Rapid Biosystems, an ag tech company. Welcome back to this segment, Roger and John. We had quite a good discussion in that first part. I'd like to continue on with a little more about your experience in the accelerator that Roger has built and is providing as a growth mechanism. Great. It, it's been a wonderful experience. Let me just start with that. Roger and I met last year at the Ag Tech event and then built our relationship. And actually, it started, we contracted with Roger's law firm to do our Delaware incorporation. And so that was a wonderful experience and worked out very well. They've given us very sage legal advice as well. And then when the incubator came up, we, we signed up. We, we proposed our, into the put our application in, and it was accepted. And we've been working very closely with Roger and his incubator firm uh, since then. Mm -hmm. Tell us about it then. You have uh, 15, 16 companies in there? We've got about 15 companies 15. in the program. Uh, several of them are on site. We offer facilities to, to some of them. Others are, are out in the field, so mm -hmm. to speak. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, it's about 15 now. Okay. And what stage are they? Are they pure uh, in, in, in intellectual property plays or are Not, they actual products and services? We want them a little further along than that. What we were mm -hmm. looking for is a company that's, that's in the market or pretty close to going to market that we can actually see the path because what we offer these companies is really that go to market you know we offer them that opportunity so some companies are a little too early we've seen some incredible technologies just some space age stuff you know you, you can't believe it until you see it but they're just not a product yet so those are a little mm -hmm. too early similarly you know there are companies that are already out there selling products and not doing anything particularly new or innovative they're a little you know beyond where we where we are we're really looking for startups that are ready, ready to go out get into the market and basically disrupt their space. Mm -hmm. This is the second segment. I'm going to let you repeat kind of what your pro your company does for those in the audience who haven't seen the first segment, just briefly. Uh, sure, sure. I'd in. be happy to. Yeah. So what we're developing at Rapid Biosystems is a portable, handheld pathogen detection system that's very fast. By fast, I mean we give results on bacteria pathogens in about 10 or 15 minutes once a sample is put into the device. Mm -hmm. And so our, our system is made of, of two components. One, we have a microfluidic sample slide. Yeah, a sample is inserted into it in about a 1 ml sample and goes through the channels. And on one side, it reacts with antibodies and other chemistries. And then the other side, there is no antibodies, but there's the same other chemistries. And so we illuminate one side first, the antibody side, with a very specific frequency uh, laser, red laser. And then what we do is we capture the light that gets scattered scattered in a forward direction at a very specific angle. Sounds a little complicated, and it is. Mm -hmm. So we use antibodies, we use highly s sensitive electronics sourced from here in this area. There's a data management component to it, there's a laser component to it, and there's antibodies. So we have six different technologies mm -hmm. that we deploy. That's why we're able to get a fast, accurate results versus what uh, antibody tests in the past mm -hmm. have been. And you pulverize the, in the case of vegetables, you pulverize it and put it in a little bit of the material. Yeah, so what we do yeah. is if we're down in Salinas, for yep. instance, right, in the miles and miles of fresh green leafy vegetables, you'll take a spinach sample or a lettuce sample, you put it in a small portable blender, almost like a coffee blender, and we'll break it up really fast. And then what we do is we extract a liquid sample, a 1 ml with a syringe or a pipette, and then we insert that into the sample. So all of our testing that we're doing is based on a water or aqueous mm -hmm. sample. In our uh, first segment, it, we uh, talked about this being mainly at the distribution level, so it doesn't get into the supermarket or to the consumer, but it sounds like the farmer could actually use this also. Well, absolutely. So there's yeah. a term within ag tech, it's called farm to fork. So all the way from growing 
to consuming. Mm -hmm. And there's a whole distribution network and channel within that. Mm -hmm. In that distribution channel, there's multiple opportunities to do pathogen testing. And some of it is required by the FDA with these relationships they have with food mm -hmm. companies. So farmers, absolutely. Large multinational companies like Dole and Chiquita and others are a really important target for us because the need is so great. Mm -hmm. I'll give you, a, for instance, one of those large companies I just mentioned down in yeah. Salinas. They sit on over a million dollars worth of inventory every single day, just waiting for pathogen test results. Oh, Can really? you imagine the waste of time and capital? How long does it take today? Right now, right now, the current gold standard is this DNA testing I talked about, PCR, and that takes a matter of hours today to a day, so it could mm -hmm. be from five hours to 30 hours uh, to get a result. Are they getting faster? Absolutely they are. Are they portable, handheld, accurate, deployable into a field? No, they're not. Mm -hmm. That's why we're trying to answer that very specific, wide global need for a testing platform. Right, right. John, in your experience, what is, what is in general, when you hear about these big recalls, you know, whether it's hamburger distributor, hamburger, right. whatever, where, do they, where do they typically happen? Is it in storage that food goes bad or you know, some truck didn't have the air conditioning or the freezer working? What, what have you seen in your experience? So in a lot of different places, to give you an answer, it's, it can happen in the field. Mm -hmm. There can be a bacterial contamination really? that's environmental. A lot of bacteria grows in soils or is left by animals that come into, into the field or fly over the field. Mm -hmm. And so there can be contamination there. There can be contamination every step in the distribution channel where it's post-harvest and it's being green leafy vegetables. It's being processed and, and, and bagged or whether it's out further and there had been some contamination that wasn't caught and it's in an environment over time that allows it to, to grow all the way to product that's expired. Well, this whole thing is a big evolution coming down. It's probably one of the biggest things we've seen in years coming out of Silicon Valley. You, uh, in a prior meeting with me, said essentially Silicon Valley is the place where we have the resources and the, um, the in intelligence and the drive to make this happen. Uh, maybe I'll let you comment it's about really that. It's really a perfect storm, if you yeah. think about it. And, and that's, that's what occurred to me one day three years ago when I, when I started the group. We're here in California, which has a $46 billion a year agriculture industry. It's by far the biggest industry in the state. We're here in Silicon Valley, which is the center of the technology universe, right? This is where people come from all over the world to find that technical know-how in those people. And we're also sitting right next to one third of all the venture capital that gets invested in this country. So it's a perfect storm of conditions to create the center of what I think is the next big thing, agritech. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of issues you, uh, we, a lot of issues we haven't touched on. One mm -hmm. is this issue of sustainability, and maybe we can get a little bit about that because that's a very broad uh, it, range. It is, and know. there's something in this for everybody. Okay, okay? good. <laughs> and <laughs> that's that's the other good good thing about this. I mean, because the people that are attracted to this quickly growing area, uh, there are of course businessmen. There are people who are who are interested in technology. Uh, there are people who are interested in, in finance, but there are also people who are interested in saving the world. And there are a lot of places where there's room for improvement when we talk about sustainability. Uh, number one, as, as, as is commonly said, we're gonna have 10 billion people on this planet by 2050. Okay, that's within the lifetimes of some of your viewers. Okay, so, so think about that. There's just not enough land to support that many people. Yeah. And it's not getting any better. In fact, China is a good example of where the land, a lot of the land has just been destroyed. So we have to get more resources out of less land. That's a big opportunity and it's a very important thing. Mm -hmm. A second area is, uh, you know, I grew up in the Midwest uh, alongside a river that was in farming country that you couldn't eat the fish out of the river because of the chemicals that were in the river. That's the old way of farming. We're moving away from that. We're gonna to have to move away from that because current agriculture has a very large footprint on the environment. And there are, there are credible studies that can show that it's creating environmental uh, issues that are just going to have to be dealt with. That's a problem, but it's an opportunity. It's mm -hmm. an opportunity for technology to solve. Great, great. Um, so John, what's next, what's coming down the road for you? First of all, I wanna give a, a moment ahead of time and let you talk about how a company or individuals would contact you uh, uh, your, your company and the website, and then what's coming down the road for the company uh, 
uh, in the next year or two. Great. So yeah. the easiest way to contact us is through our website, www.rapidbiosystems.com, or my email, which is jerickson, E-R-I-C-K-S-O-N, at rapidbiosystems.com. That's the easiest way to get a hold of me. Okay, great. I'll, I'll let you also give your uh, information for contact. Uh, Google, Google uh, Roger Roy, Royce. Royce, Roycelaw.com, <laughs> Royce with an S, not a C, Roycelaw.com, Roycelaw Incubator, Roycelaw Egg Tech, and yeah, you'll find okay. us. Silicon Valley Egg Tech is good. Um, so there's a, another uh, last issue I just want to touch on, and that is the world's changing dramatically. There are a number of parts of the world that have a lot of um, violence and um, um, unfortunate things taking place. Food security, the security to produce a reliable food supply seems to be emerging as a concern in those countries and frankly it'd probably be a concern in our country too. We've been blessed to have a wealth of fertile land, great production methods, we've increased yield. Um, but are there any thoughts or um, concerns that, uh, we, that this will become a strategic food production, food security will become a future issue in the world. Oh, I think it already is. The you issue do. of food security, absolutely. And that is, there are technologies out there addressing that that very issue right now. That's an important one. And you touch on another one, is food as a national security issue. And that's always been true. It's a, it's a very, it can be a very politicized issue. Does water fall into ag tech water management? Absolutely, we have several technologies. We call it precision, a subset of precision farming that drip irrigation is a good example, but there are much more advanced irrigation that save water, which is really important these days, as you know, especially here in California. Very important, great, great. And John, um, I did want to ask you, is there any um, upcoming information or announcements you're gonna do? You're gonna be at the conference, the uh, ag tech conference, May? May 11th, Computer yeah. History Museum yeah. in Mountain View. And you're going to be on stage? Well, or? we hope so. I yeah, certainly absolutely. will be well, you attending. Haven't announced that yet. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'll be attending that conference. And it really, for us in the company, this was a, a critical moment in our development. By getting associated with Roger and then the incubator, it allowed us to have access for a small startup like we are. To have the type of access that Roger's incubator has offered us has just been tremendous. <laughs> and, and from a, a you know, a startup perspective, that's critical. Critical to capital, critical to technology, et cetera. And we've had an opportunity to meet mm -hmm. dozens of folks in this space. It's a big country, big world. Are there other organizations doing anything like this that you're aware of? I'm not asking you to name your competition. I'm just saying if I'm in Kentucky or I'm in Michigan or I'm in Ohio and I want to do something, do I just come out here and see you? Well, well, first of all, I have no competition <laughs> because I'm, I'm interested in expanding the space generally. Okay. So the more the merrier. There are, other, there are other accelerators around agriculture and around food. They're, they don't quite have the same focus as us. Uh, I'm not aware of another one that's, that's exactly like us where we're just applying that Silicon Valley rainforest network to the ag tech industry. A lot of them are focused on sustainability, some on food. Uh, some on food tech, but we're somewhat unique in what we're doing. That's great, great. I wanna thank both of you for coming on tonight. I've thoroughly enjoyed it. I've received an education to some extent. I really knew nothing about ag tech at all, but it's a very deep and very broad market. So I wanna thank you both and I wanna keep in touch because I think this is gonna be a remarkable evolution and we should be seeing some announcements in the next 12 to 18 months. Thanks, Joe. Absolutely. appreciate it. Thank you. I'd like to thank you for joining us on this segment of Game Changer Silicon Valley. Each week we'll feature a new company and a new technology that may be the game changer of tomorrow. Thank you and good night now.